tell me we need to take a very hard course of action <coughs> to deal with institutional racism and to deal with a broken criminal justice system. A system <laughs> Let me, I look forward to engaging in a discussion and hearing your ideas, and, and let me be very frank. Um, we need your help, I need your help in helping to formulate and understand what is going on and coming up with the best ideas. I can't do it alone, and I look forward to hearing your ideas, and I want you to be very frank with me. Don't tell me what I want to hear. Let's lay it out on the table. But let me just talk about some of the areas that I think we need to go forward on. Use of force. We have seen too often police officers use lethal force perhaps as a first response rather than a last response. Okay, now I was a mayor for eight years. I worked closely with police. They have a very hard job. Most of these guys try hard to do it well. But I have seen and you have seen police officers taking out a gun and shooting people when there were other ways to deal with that issue. This is an issue that has to be dealt with. Police officers are not just macho guys, they're not to show how tough they are. The goal is to deal with the situation in as nonviolent a way as you can, especially when you're dealing with people with mental illness, which is often, very often, the case. Um, we need to have police departments that reflect the diversity of the communities in which they are serving. Okay. If you have a largely Latino community, it's important to have Latino police officers. Black community, we should have a large number of black police officers, etc., etc. We need to demilitarize local police departments. I have seen. <laughs> I have seen, and you have seen, in Ferguson and elsewhere, police departments that look like we're in Iraq. Like it's an invading army. Okay. The goal of a good police department, and there are good police departments, <coughs> is that the people in the community feel comfortable with the police. We have community policing rather than seeing the police department as an oppressive force. If a police officer, and again, police officer is a difficult job. But if a police officer, like any other public official, breaks the law, that police officer must be held accountable for his actions. We need to require police departments and states to provide public reports on all police shootings. Some departments have very few shootings. Some departments have a lot of shootings. We should understand and document the shootings and investigate the shootings. We have got to develop standards and crack down on communities that are using their police forces essentially as revenue generators. You familiar with that? Um, so bottom line is we need real criminal justice reform. We need to deal with issues and maybe there are some differences of opinion here, and I'd like to hear them, on the so-called war on drugs. Now, what is that about? What that is about is that for the last many decades, millions of people have accrued police records because they possess marijuana. Okay. Now, the federal government's, um, federal government's Controlled Substance Act list as their top, on their top line, Schedule 1, marijuana at the same level as heroin. Heroin, marijuana, the same. Does that make any sense to anybody here? Heroin kills people. Marijuana, you can argue what it does, different points of view on it, but it, no one thinks that it has the same impact health-wise that heroin does. Now, I have introduced legislation, and I'd like to hear your views on it in a minute, about taking legislation which would take marijuana out of the Federal Controlled Substance Act and not make it a federal crime. Doesn't make it legal, but it does, it, 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 
makes it not a federal crime. But why did I do that? I did that because we have millions of people over a period of decades who get criminal records for possession of marijuana. What happens when you have a criminal record and you go in looking for a job? It's hard to get that job and people get off on a wrong track. So if states want to legalize marijuana, that's fine. They don't, that's fine. But I just don't think it should be a federal crime. I want to see doing away with minimum mandatory sentences. Judges need more discretion. I also want to see us do a much, much better job in terms of dealing with people who were in jail and then are getting out of jail. Our rates of recidivism are much, much too high. I'll tell you a story. I was in Iowa uh, last month. We had a wonderful hearing on criminal justice. We had two guys uh, who both had served time. And they got their lives together and they're both doing great work in, in communities now. One guy says, I was released from prison after I can't remember how many years he served. And I was given a $75 check <coughs> and sent on my way. Now, when you give somebody a $75 check and you send them on their way, you can almost guarantee they're going to go back into prison again. All right, what we need to do is to make sure that when people leave prison, they have the job training and hopefully jobs when they get out, that they're earning an income, that they have decent housing, and that they are not back in the environment that they were in when they got into prison in the first place. So we can do a lot better in that area. All right, I've touched on a number of issues, and I know there was a lot of uh, other concerns on your minds, so let me stop there. Uh, and just to say that I'm running for president because I think given the crises that we face today on income and wealth inequality, on the decline of the American middle class, on the high level of poverty that we have, on a corrupt campaign finance system, on the need to change and reform, change, our energy system away from fossil fuel to deal with climate change. <laughs> the need to make public colleges and universities tuition free on the need to demand and to tell the wealthiest people in this country they're going to start paying their fair share of taxes. <laughs> and the need to end the corrupt campaign finance system. In other words, look, I grew up in a three-and-a-half-room rent-controlled apartment in Brooklyn, New York. Grew up in a family that never had any money. I am very happy being, and I, I invite all of you to come to the great state of Vermont. It is a beautiful, beautiful state. Come in the summertime, you'll probably like it more. <laughs> but I'm very happy being Vermont Senator. The only reason I'm running for president is that I think it is just too late for establishment politics and establishment we need bold action right now. We need a president who will do what most presidents don't do, that is have the guts to take on the billionaire class that today wields so much power over the lives of our economy. <laughs> so with that, uh, please um, just fire away. Tell me your assessment of what you think is going on. Ask me questions. Whatever you want. Our gentleman right there, sir.